So we're in the uh, holding period right now. Again, the uh, Cygnus vehicle on top loaded with almost 7,400 pounds of cargo inside. The vehicle itself uh, named after John Young. The vehicle is called the SS John Young, named after the late astronaut board in San Francisco, California. Became a fighter pilot and test pilot for the Navy uh, before joining NASA and is a veteran of six space flights on three different programs. Uh, his first flight was on Gemini 3 with Gus Grissom to test the uh, Gemini spacecraft itself. And then he flew again on Gemini 10 with Mike Collins, tested rendezvous and close formation flying. This was all in preparation for some of the lunar missions, which he did fly on. He flew on Apollo 10 and 16. Apollo 10, he flew as command module pilot with Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan. Uh, this was the flight before the famous Apollo 11 that actually landed on the moon. But uh, John Young did get his chance on uh, Apollo 16. He landed on the moon with Charlie Duke, Ken Mattingly as the command module pilot orbiting above. John Young also flew on the very first maiden flight of the space shuttle STS-1 with Bob Crippen back in 1981. And his final flight was STS-9 where he served as spacecraft commander. And this was the first space lab mission. We're now under 10 seconds from launch. Four, three. Two, one. Launch has been initiated. And we have, and we have liftoff of the NG-10 mission, taking Cygnus to the ISS. We've got engines at full power and uh, nominal attitude. Engine performance after startup looks nominal. Good avionics power, good TVC. Good liftoff and the uh, Cygnus lighting up the night sky and Terry's carrying Cygnus and 7,400 pounds of cargo, scientific experiments, food, and supplies to the International Space Station. Northrop Grumman reporting good calls on its way up. PVC is nominal. Engines are powered back to 55% power. Altitude 15,000 feet, nominal attitude. Everything good, looking good so far. Again, this first stage burns for about 3 minutes, 35 seconds. Engine throttled up and operate nominal. You have full power. Attitude remains good. Just passing through 25,000 feet. Good TVC steering. Chamber, chamber pressures look good. Velocity passing through, and uh, attitude looks good as we pass through max Q, and uh, passing through altitude of 50,000 feet. Max Q is maximum dynamic pressure against the vehicle. Passing through everything still looking good. 100% power. 5,000 feet per second. At it. Altitude 75,000 feet. Engine operation remains nominal as we uh, hit T plus two minutes. Avionics power looks good. Attitude remains nominal. Pet velocity 8,000 feet per second. Engine operation remains good. Attitude remains nominal, 125,000 feet altitude. Power systems look good. Pump speeds look good at 100% power. And we just passed 150,000 feet altitude. Everything looking good. Now going to an animated view based on uh, telemetry from Northrop Grumman. Uh, just about a minute left of the first stage burning. And we have Miko. Confirmation of main engine cutoff. Vehicles now entering a separation. good vehicle separation, now entering a coast phase. And the lower attitude remains nominal. Next step will be fairing separation We're about 30 seconds from and interstage separation. Attitude and power systems look nominal. At stage one delta V of 17,300 feet per second. 
and we have fairing separation and interstage separation and attitude remains nominal. TVC battery initiated and we have stage two ignition and attitude remains nominal. Solid. And we've got uh, stage two burnout at this time. Attitude is nominal, we'll now coast for 120 seconds prior to payload separation. Power systems look good. And we've got uh, Cygnus payload separation. And confirm that the Cygnus has separated from that second stage. Like we've uh, got uh, Cygnus injected to uh, a nominal uh, insertion orbit and uh, hope they've got a smooth trip uh, the rest of the way to the ISS.